Hallelujah. I invite you all to stand as we welcome our bishop to come and bring the word. We need to hear from anointing. We pray that you will move by your power and by your spirit and you be all honor, dominion and majesty and power in Jesus' name. Let the church say Amen. And you may be seated. Praise God. I want to greet everyone again in the name of Jesus. I also want to greet those who are online and I trust that you will stay tuned for the word and be blessed today because the Lord of hosts is with us. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. Shall we praise his name? Shall we praise his name? Bless the Lord. And today we are looking at family matters to God. Amen. Family matters to God. And I will be sharing a lot of scriptures. And I trust that you make note and go over them as you empower yourself about what the word of God teaches. Praise God, and there will also be some revelation. So it's something for you to think about, something to look at today. Amen. And perhaps you'll have to help me as well to quote the scriptures. Amen. So when I give you the verse, you tell me what it is. Is that okay? Bless the Lord. So we're in a time of interaction and the feasting on the word of God. The scripture was read from Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 through 8 and 9 and I'm focusing on verse 1 through 4. Praise God. Just for the background, family as we know it. It is the glue, family is that glue that holds the fabric of society together. And all of us, we have been impacted by our family in some shape or form. Sometimes we are impacted positively and sometimes we are impacted negatively. But sometimes those negative impacts help us to triumph, help us to work harder, help us to become who we are. Praise God. So our individual families have actually influenced us to be who we are. So some of us, though we did not like certain things when we were much younger, our family was there to encourage us and to push us in direction that we tell ourselves that we would not go. Praise God. So the family means much to us. And today, family is also important to God. It matters to God. Hallelujah. And so in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, God says that it is not good that the man should live to down, should be alone. And I will make him an help meet for him. Praise God. And so God realized that as a man by yourself, you are going to be lonely. Praise God. As a man by yourself, you are going to have some challenges. And so he instituted marriage so that man and wife can build together and grow together and love together and bring forth 
children so that the family can be expanded and through the family the nation shall be blessed through the families the individual churches shall be populated and shall continue hallelujah so God has a big plan for the church God is church God has a big plan for each and every family because family matters to him can somebody give him praise this morning Praise God. So right there in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, we see that the first family was started and Adam got a wife. I want to interject here that nowhere in the Bible we see any man and man kind of union be promoted. There is a story about when the angels came and came to visit with the servant of God that the and say go and satisfy their need but the men did not want the, the man of God's daughter they wanted the angels for themselves because these angels were new in tone and they wanted fresh meat and so God had to destroy that city and that's a lesson for us today that family is very very important to God in the promote no other thing in our culture, in our context, people that promote other types of family. Uh, but as a church, we stand resolute on the word of God. Praise God. And if you're a family that don't have children, nothing is wrong with it. With, with, with being a surrogate and adopting and growing children according to the word of God. But some people want to adopt and, 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 and bring into the family and create a different kind of family structure. Oh, we could fire to that this morning. We lift up the family that God promotes because righteousness exalts a nation. And sin is a reproach to any people. So throughout the Bible, God spoke to strengthen the family. Praise God. And the central theme, theme of the Bible is that God promised to bless all the families of the earth through Abraham. He made that promise to him. So in Acts chapter 3 verse 25, it says to us, ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made unto our fathers, saying to Abraham and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth all the people all the different people group of the earth shall be blessed praise God and God himself honored that promise he honored that promise so blessing will come to every family and every nation through this descendant of Abraham and we see that fulfilled in the word of God because when we trace the Bible and look at Abraham's lineage, we see that this descendant came forth and he was Jesus Christ, the Son of God who died on the cross, forgive our sins. And so today, you and I have been blessed. Praise God. Acts 3.26 shows us that Jesus forgives our sins. Ah, and he gives us freedom from the slavery of sin. And so this is the greatest blessing that you and I have this morning to be delivered from our sins. I am no longer a slave to fear and a slave to sin because Jesus came and he paid it all for me on Calvary. Can somebody give him a praise? Hallelujah. The greatest blessing that the world could ever have is that Jesus came. The fulfillment of that promise that was given to Abraham. So God wants every family member to benefit. So if you look at Acts 16 verse 31, it says to us, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So sometimes as 
Christians, when we look in our household, we want to save and we feel comfortable about it. God's desire is that the entire household must be saved. And so you must be troubled about it when your family members refuse to accept God. Like Joshua, you must say, ask for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Shall we praise his name? Family matters to God and therefore you matters to him. You are very important because it's individuals that makes a family. Individuals that make up the family and the family becomes community and the community make up the church. Hallelujah! And the church make up the nation and the nations make up the world. So family matters and you also as an individual, you are mattering to God this morning. And when we look at it, God's offer to bless all nations of the world is still open to us. And it is freely extended to everyone. Those who are out of Christ this morning, this offer is available to you. God wants to bless you. God wants to do something new in your life. But you have got to surrender. Family is at the center of God's plan for happiness and progress of his children. Can you give it praise this morning? God desires that we will be happy. He said he wish above all things that we will prosper and be good health. So God has some good plans for us. His thoughts towards us is to bless us. Not to give us evil. His thoughts to us are not evil. His thoughts to us are good thoughts. He wants to give us an expected end. And so we need to trust him this morning. God has established the family from the beginning. And the Bible shows many examples of strong family. And it also shows those that are loving and happy family. Hallelujah. And so as we read in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 through 4, we see that Paul is teaching about family relationship. For the family to be happy and live in love, there are some principles that ought to be followed. Hallelujah. So children and parents, they have a responsibility for, to each other. The children should honor their parents. Hallelujah. And, e and, and, and even when the parents are demanding and unfair, children are called to honor their parents. Oh, when you get bored like me, you still have to honor your parents. Praise God. Because once you are gone to a parent, you remain a child of theirs forever. Oh, when you think you're adult, you're still their children. And you have a responsibility to them. Though you leave or you don't leave or you start your own family, you still must honor those who have brought you into this world. Hallelujah. And parents should care gently for their children. Even when the children are disobedient and unpleasant, you have to care for them. Those who are saved, mother, you pray for your children. All when them be warned, all when you talk to them over and over, Minister Adams, you keep praying for them because your faith is that one day these children will be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we pray, what the Bible teaches, then we're going to have a happy family. But notice that the Bible also shares some examples of some divided family. Divided family. Some family with some great challenges. Hallelujah. And so I challenge you that whichever family structure you find yourself in, whether it's a happy family or a divided family, you need to value your family because God has placed you in your family for a purpose. And through you, if you live for God, your family shall be delivered. Your family shall be blessed. Your, your family will not remain ordinary. Your family will bless God. And your family will make an impact in this nation that some give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 I don't have it on the script, but I want to look at, at, at Naomi. You realize that she left and she went out with her husband and her, her two sons and those sons married and the family expanded and they were living a good life. But there comes the time 
when the husband was taken and the sons were taken and she was left with daughter and law alone. The family was disrupted, but she desired that she's gonna go back home ah, because there is some food back home and she wanted to get help back at her original home and she sent her daughters in law, but there was one who stood with her. Ruth says, Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee. For where thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God shall be my God. And through Ruth, Naomi was blessed. Hallelujah. Ah, brokenness in their lives and scandal in 
your ancestry. Think about Tamar. Oh, what a scandal that was when she tricked oh, her father-in-law acting like she a prostitute and satisfied him and she came forth with twins. What a scandal in the lineage. But the word of God says that uh, Judas uh, begot Pharaoh and Zara of Tamar and Pharaoh begot Ezra and Ezra begot Aram. Hallelujah. Through this same lineage, we come down to the end of this account of the lineage in verse 16 of St. Matthew chapter 1. And it says to us, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So the lineage is here in the New Testament. Praise God. And it has come, the, 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 the generation has come from those we heard about in the Old Testament. And it lined up according to scriptures. Shall we bless the Lord? These were not perfect families, but they were perfect for the Savior to come forth ah, through this lineage. Ah, and so this morning, no matter how dysfunctional your family is, you need to remain as the remnant of God. And you will serve him and you will give him all that is you unto his name. You will trust him for his favor. You will trust him to fulfill that which he has promised you because he is such a God. Give him a praise. Let us now look at a few of the dysfunctional families and ensure that we don't harness this kind of thing in our own family. So look at Abraham. Abraham, he lied about Sarah being his wife. He said, my sister, man. Of a truth, she was his half-sister. But because he was looking for favor and to be treated well, he said that she's my sister. He did not accept her and promote her and recommended her as his wife. And so he gave his wife up to Pharaoh for Pharaoh to take his wife as uh, take, take, take his wife as his own. Ah, and because of this, Abraham received cattle. Abraham received servants to return home. Yes, he, 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 was, he was doing something tricky. He was a con man, a scammer, using it to get a, get a blind and to get ahead. So many of this is in our culture today, and we want to stamp it out in our family. Hallelujah, because lying lips are an abomination unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Realize that Abraham, he experienced a long and a painful battle of infertility. And he went up now to have arranged marriage with the slave woman of his, uh, uh, employed to his wife, which bring forth bitterness and pain and turmoil in the family. But it's that same line that Jesus comes from. Hallelujah. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Yes, because Jesus Christ came out of Nazareth. Look at Isaac and Rebecca. Favoritism. It brought about a dysfunctional family. And the family was divided in their parental affection. One prefer Esau, one prefer Jacob. And it caused a controversy in the family. And Rebecca got with her son to trick her husband and to deny her other son of his friend of his blessing. This is the challenge that some family line have. Because some mother prefer them daughter more than son. And some father prefer him son more than daughter. And the list goes on. But we have got to realize that your children are an heritage unto the Lord. And you must love and care for them according to the word of God. Can you give him praise this morning? The final one I want to look at is Judah. Because Judah have the biggest scandal in a theme. Lineage, praise God. Judah, family system was marred by scandal. He married a Canaanite woman. This was a, a race that he was forbidden to marry. But he chose to marry those ungodly, that ungodly woman who was not worshipping the true and living God. And out of this, they had children, and two of those sons 
were deemed wicked in God's eyes. And God, God sued them. In Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 38, sorry. And so we see that in that same chapter, his daughter-in-law Tamar, she disguised herself as a prostitute and she seduced Judah and bring forth twins. Yes, these families were plagued with issues, but they were important to God. So no matter what happened in your family, if it's a family of unemployment, a family will come in like them and do things that are contrary to God. As long as you know the name of Christ, you continue to be that vanguard for your family. You continue to be that light to point all your family members to the living God. Hallelujah. Because family is important to God. We shall give, uh, as a family, we must give thanks to God. Give God thanks, man. For the family that you're in. Sometimes we're jealous. I said, Boy, well, I wish we did in a sister Chilean's family. No wish we did in a minister's young family because she can so and we not dress up every day. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Yes, man, people have them different reasons. Some would have want me in a sister, my minister, my Adam's family. Because she's a woman with love cook. Eh? And sister Alma. Those people love cook say you know, say your day you're gonna always cater to. Amen. And then some people feel like they want in a Reverend Joy family. Cause when she has said she spent like she has been like she has a different source. Hallelujah! But I'm glad that she continues to give glory to God. Everything that she has or ever own, she commits it to God. Hallelujah! I got money, let me spend. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some people want to be in another family today. No say no church. I'll be the people like Brother Carter. He got Carter. Why in our new family? I say no sometimes, you know. And when you have struggle, um, sister, sister, I have I And you know, I'm not sure how the bills are. It's a boy who can be born in the wrong family. I should not want another family. And with my parents too. Why me in a disbelief come in? But continue to trust in your God. Realize that God has ordained your family line for a purpose. And through you, your family shall be blessed. Continue to pray your way through. Continue to endure. Praise God. Live in unity as a family. Serve the true and living God. Don't let nobody distract you. But turn your mind from the living God. Hold on to your God and continue to introduce your God to your family because it's only through God that your family is going to be helped and allow God to use your family. If God want to use you in a ministry, if God want to use you in any way, you allow God to use your family for his glory and for his honor. Family is very important to God because all of us, we are it's all of us from the family of God. All of us as members of this church forms the family of God. So the family is very important to God. And so the songwriter says, I am so glad that I'm a part of the family of God. What happened? I'm washed in his fountain. Cleansed by what? His blood. I'm a joint here with Jesus. So you see every legacy that is due to Jesus. As a son of God, that legacy is due to you too, Sister Julia. Hallelujah. You are joined here with Jesus. Equally, you are sharing of the blessings and the legacy of the Almighty God. And because of that, I am glad that I'm a part of the family of God. Praise God. As a member of the family of God, we all have a responsibility. So hear what the word of God says. And you're going to help me now. Ephesians 5 verse 25. Husbands, what? Love your wives. Even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Ephesians 5 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. As unto the Lord. Bless the Lord. And then in Mark chapter 10 verse 6 through 9, he, he says to us, but from the beginning of creation, God, um, 
beginning of creation, God created male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. Praise the Lord. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. Bless the Lord and let God just seal it off. What care for God and join together. Let no man put asunder. Give your hands a round of applause for the living God today. The husband and wife is important in the family union. But listen now, Psalm 127 verse 3. Lord, children are a heritage unto the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. Hallelujah. So the children that you have brought forth as a mother, this is a reward from the living God. Hallelujah. And then Luke 18, 16 says, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. In Proverbs 22, verse 6, it says, Train of the child in the way he should Go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So I when Brother Romeo and don't come to service for three months, one month, two months, him know the right, him have a foundation. So somehow he's going to come back. Amen? And sometimes he feel like a challenge in a sister to the eye. Him not come for a while, so him say, let me go visit somewhere else. <laughs> And you find that you still not feel comfortable. So somehow you have to come back home. The songwriter says, He that are weary, come home. <laughs> Shall we bless the Lord? The family we are talking about. When you are trained up, you are going to come back because you have a source. Yes, you know your foundation. Ephesians 6, 4 that we read today. And he fathers provoke not your children to wrath. But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I really wonder why them sing Lord the Father and the Brother Robin. In the contractor. Why? Me me wonder, me wonder about it. Kind of said, nothing about the mother. Because the mothers are always naturally good nurturers. Yes, I will be in them get bruised up. We just say, tap it up man, tap it up. And the mother come and she wipe and she dress. And she concerned about it. And she push. We just push them aside. Eh? Rough. But the mothers know how to nurture. And so the word of God says, He fathers provoke not your children to wrath. But bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Colossians 3.20. Children. I'm sorry that the children are out this morning. Children ought to obey their parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. In Exodus 20 verse 12. Right down there in the book of the laws. It says honor thy father and thy mother. That thy days may be long upon the earth. And we realize that many children are dead already now. You know. God if we are more than disobedient. And we really want to honor the way they should. But they must realize that when they honor their parents, their days will be long, which the Lord thy God has given unto them. Hallelujah! Coming down nicely. Praise God. So forgiveness is an important ingredient within any family. Hear what the word of God says in Colossians 3 verse 13. Forbearing one another as the family of God, and in your individual families, you have to learn to tolerate each other. Mommy rough and mommy hard, but I have to learn to tolerate. The children disobedient and wayward, but I have to learn to tolerate. So forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ has forgiven you, so also do he. You hear that, Sister Shirley? So when you big daughter and get trouble, you, know, you have to learn to tolerate her. You have to learn to forgive her. Because the Lord, you want the forgiveness of God. And you have to forgive her. And help her to see the right way that she will not 
go astray. Another thing that is important in the family is love. And so 1 John 4 verse 20 says, If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother or uh, uh, his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? So some of us will be very holy and we love God. But it's when church over, we not shake the body and we don't love them people there. Them people are too hard, they're not hypocrites. Now shake them hand, man. Now shake them hand. But you are saying that you love God. The word of God says you are a liar. The truth I know you. Hallelujah. So all of it hard to love your brothers and sisters. You have to work on it. Because love is an important thing for the family. And family matters to God. Finally, unity must be in the family. Mark 3 verse 25 says, And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. We want modern church to stand as a family. We've got to remain in unity. You want the Williams family to remain intact? You've got to stand in unity. You want to see the Walters family intact? You've got to be in unity. You want the MacPherson family to be intact? You've got to be in unity. The Carters, the Adams, the Wiggins, hallelujah, the Clarks, and the Bartley, and the Powells, praise God, and the Browns, whatever you are, Sister Andrea, yes, and the Case, yes, if we want our family to be in town, we've got to live in unity. Sometimes we realize that as a family, we don't think and see things eye to eye. And that is good. Because when we see things differently, we can come with our wealth of experience and knowledge and discuss a matter and make a better decision. Sometimes we think we know it all and we can make the best decision. But then when you make it, it fail, Minister Young. If you didn't have somebody else who would think about other things that you don't think about, we would have made a better decision as a family. And the challenge that we have, we would not be in this predicament. So we must realize the diversity in the family. Realize the uniqueness. Yes, and the differences, you know, in talk and, and so on. Remember that everybody now want to become doctor. Some want to become doctor. Some want to be lawyer. Some want to go the security force. Some all them want to just go trim here. Some just want to drive taxi and they're good with that. Whatever your family members are, uh, choose for their way of career. You encourage them as long as they are doing it for their money's bread. You know I embrace thief and scammers. Because when they're not thief and scam, you may lose some of your assets too. Because if you can't prove what you buy your asset, ah, even though you're hard working money buy it, if the government think that and the scammer money give you what you have, you may lose it also. So you've got to lift up your family before God when they are wayward and out of God, they are out of line with God, so that they get in line because your family will suffer. And sometimes the family life look good now, but what about the generations to come? We are living on the scammer money and we are living up and it good. But think about your offspring. What calamity they are going to be under because of the wrong choices that your family made now. Look at those who live lavishly. I see recently in the paper, this man lose much of his asset. All 14 houses, you know. Some man are about a scamming and now he's losing at, at, at that time half of his wealth. And I'm sure they're still trying to get the other half. Can the government not stop at nothing to take away everything? And after you have maybe three good life in a brother Carter. Three good life, years of good life, living it up, traveling the world, hotel suites and other things and living lavishly. You may spend the rest of your life in prison. Think about it. You will exchange your life long time that you have to live for God for, for, uh, for just three years of excitement and good thing and the rest of it is incarceration think about it ask God to help us to make the right choices now because that will determine 
how our end will be, and it also determines the kind of life that your offspring will live. We want good life for it for the offspring. So we've got to live the way the way the Lord wants us to live now, so that our offspring will not be under any condemnation. No generation curse must pass on to our children in the name of Jesus. God must be praised. And so I wrap up this sermon this morning to tell you that family is important to God. You also are important to God. Your family is important to Mother Church. Because every time a new family starts here, the work is swelling, the work is growing. Amen? And the same thing for God. Family is important to him. And each family expands his kingdom. And whatever his will is and his purpose can be fulfilled through the family.